be about teaching secondary reading. Okay, so students who are middle school age, um, you know, sort of low intermediate level. Okay, and we're going to be doing this through the lens of the eFuture program, okay, secondary reading program, which consists of three different series, okay? You can see them there on the bottom of the slide, Reading Town, Reading World, and Reading Planet. Can you guess why we named them that? Why do you think it starts with Town, then World, and then finishes with Planet? Can you guess? Oh, nice to hear about eFuture again. Wonderful, Esther, yeah. Sure. So can you guess why do you think we called it Reading Town, World, and Planet? Any guesses? Yeah. Rhonda, yeah, we want to, you know, it makes sense, right? Town is smaller, then we go to the world level, and then finally we're basically in, in space, right? Uh, at the universal level, okay, with planets. So, of course, that's why. All right. So... I'll just give you an, a quick overview of today's plan. So I, I do want to start with uh, an overview of the series. I don't want to take too much time on that, though. Um, my feeling, my opinion is just that, you know, if you, if you really want to learn more information about the series, you can go to the eFuture website or you can contact me or anyone here. So you can find that information out uh, if, you, if you want. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. But of course, it's important to go over the key things. Uh, and then I want to spend most of the time on a guided lesson talking about how to actually uh, teach secondary reading, giving you some strategies, tips, and we can do some activities. Okay, hopefully some will be new to you. Um, try to use different ones that uh, maybe you're not so familiar, okay? So hopefully um, it, there'll be something that you can add to your um, list of activities that you do with your classes. And then finally, just a, just a quick rundown of the additional resources that you can use and access uh, for this program. Okay, so that's our plan. We'll start with a, an overview of the series. So these are the nine books in the series. As we talked about and I mentioned, there is Reading Town, Reading World, and then Reading Planet, and three books in each, okay? So those are the cover pages for all of the books. And this is just a chart that shows, again, um, that there are three books, like levels one, two, and three in each series. Uh, and that makes up the nine book reading program, secondary reading program, okay? So nine books in total. And you'll probably want to know the passage word counts, okay? So you can sort of have a better idea of which book uh, and which series is best for, for you and your, your students. So Reading Town, which is the lowest level, okay, uh, has passage word counts anywhere from 220 to 300 words. And then once you go up to Reading World, it's between 300 and 400. And then the highest level, uh, the most advanced level reading planet has passage words counts from 380 to 500 words. Okay, and the CEFR level, for those of you who are familiar with that uh, system, reading town and world are considered B1, which is like low intermediate, and reading planet is B2, which is sort of like higher intermediate, okay? So we're, we're in the, uh, the intermediate range anyway, okay, for, for all three of the series. Okay, I just wanted to give you a visual of 
the cover pages. So that's Reading Town, Reading World, okay? One, two, three. Hope you like the, the images. We spent a lot of time <laughs> picking them out, okay? And Reading Planet. And, it, and of course, if you have any questions while I'm talking, uh, I'd love for you to, to write them in the chat. Okay, the features. So the key features of this program, this reading program, four. There are four key features. The first one, high interest passages. Okay, so this is a nonfiction reading series. Okay, so all of the information in the passages is is nonfiction. Okay, so it, it is real. Students will be learning about like real life things, okay, and things that they can relate to their real life. Um, and um, reading skills, okay, so reading skill practice, that's the second key feature of the program, and we're going to cover this in detail a little bit later during the guided lesson. But reading skills, that's gonna be one of the big, big focuses for today. That's really what I want, one of the main things I want you to, to get out of this. So students will practice reading skills, academic reading skills um, to, to improve their reading ability and to help them become more like active readers so they can really engage with the text that they are reading. Okay, so there will be various exercises and activities that they can do to, to do that throughout the series. And cumulative vocabulary practice. So students will be introduced to a lot of new vocabulary throughout the series and each word, each target word, keyword that they will be introduced to, they get to practice it five times throughout each book, okay? So, of course, that helps them consolidate their understanding uh, and comprehension of each new vocabulary word. Hello, Mexico. Hello, Maria. Great. Okay, love to see everyone saying hi. And, yeah, last one. Um, for skills practice, okay, this is key. So all four language skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking are practiced in the, in the series, in the program, which means the program can uh, some people, a lot of people actually uh, already do. They use this program as a substitute for a secondary course book. So because it covers all those four language skills, uh, you, you can use the program as a secondary course book, okay? If you, if you, if you don't have one and, and if you want to use something from the future, because we make good products, okay? Um, lesson flow. So the flow of each lesson in the program, three, three key parts. And it, they make sense, right? First one, pre-reading, um, basically warm up before the passage. Okay. So that includes warm up discussion and key vocabulary. So students will get a chance to uh, look at the vocabulary before they even read it in the passage, okay, which is key because it, it's better that they understand those difficult words before they start reading the passage rather than encountering those words while they're actually reading them or while they're reading the, the passage and going through everything in the text. So during reading, this is when students are reading the nonfiction informative passage. And this also includes a lot of reading skill practice activities, exercises, okay? So exercises that will test their key reading skills. And again, I will we'll get into those in a lot more detail soon. 
Um, and then there are also fact files that provide a lot of uh, like interesting information that supplements the information in each passage. And after reading, okay, so we have pre-reading, during reading, and then of course after reading. And this includes, again, more vocabulary review, more discussion questions, and writing practice. So again, with the four skills practice, there's uh, reading, uh, speaking, like discussion, um, listening, and of course they have a chance to, because uh, they can listen to the passage and, uh, and then writing practice. Okay, they have a chance to practice their writing skills too. So all four uh, language skills. So yeah, I just want to give, give you a quick look at, at how each section looks in an actual lesson, okay? So we have the pre-reading section, and you can see there, there are discussion questions, and there is a, a vocabulary exercise, along with relevant images for the, the content that students are about to read about in the passage. Okay, and this is the passage, and this is actually the passage that we're gonna use for the, the guided lesson, okay? So we'll, we'll come back to this. Okay, so that's the passage, and then this is our during reading section, and this is where we have all of our academic reading skill practice exercises. So like scanning for information, identifying main ideas, comparing and contrasting, all those kinds of reading skills, okay? So students will get a chance to test those and practice those. Um, and then after reading, okay, as I mentioned, more vocabulary practice, uh, discussion questions, and writing practice, okay? So that's just the flow of the lesson and each series, Reading Town, Reading World, Reading Planet, all has a similar flow like that, okay, with those three key sections, pre-reading, during reading, and after reading. Content, um, as you can guess, this is just a screenshot of the table of contents uh, for Reading World One. And as you can, Yes, some topics include animals, technology, sports, arts, environment, health, etc. Okay, um, and, and and many and many more, and all nonfiction content. Okay, and yes, as I mentioned, Unit Eight: Smart Living, Future Transportation. That's the unit that we're going to use for our guided lesson in a moment. Okay, so one of, the, one of the things I want to emphasize here, uh, the main goal of the series, of the program, I should say, is to develop students' academic reading skills so students can become better active readers. That's how I would define it and summarize it. So we wanna develop their academic reading skills so they can become better active readers. And I thought uh, I'd just have a little fun here and do an activity with this uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting and to make maybe help you remember better. If there's any, if there's any uh, information that you ever wanna emphasize with your students, you could perhaps use this kind of activity where you write out the statement and then you gradually subtract or remove words from the sentence. So it just sort of keeps them paying attention and keeps them engaged. So here, to develop academic, oh, what's the missing word? Do you remember? Oh. Okay, so to develop academic reading skills so students can become better active readers. Yes, reading. Oh, what is the next missing word? To develop academic reading skills so students can become, what's the word? Do you, yes, better. 
Okay, next word, another word gone. To develop oh what was it? Oh okay, academic. Yes, academic reading skills. So students can become better active readers. What's the next word that's gone? Does anyone know? Yes, active, right, active readers. And one more. Oh, it's getting tricky now. To develop academic reading skills. So yes, students can become, one more. Okay, this is becoming tough for me. <laughs> yeah, skills. Okay, and then, Okay, we just, we come back and show it again. Okay, I just wanted to sort of do that uh, activity with you, just to show you it's a good way to keep students uh, paying attention and focused on something that you really want to emphasize, right? So the main goal of the series is to develop academic reading skills so students can become better active readers, okay? So what is active reading? Second here. Okay, so it's when students are critically engaging with text that we read. So not just passively going through it, skimming, actually critically engaging with it. And what does that mean? Questioning things, asking questions, making predictions, like making guesses, guessing about certain things, what's going to happen, uh, and evaluating or analyzing things, okay? So basically asking a lot of questions about what we're actually reading, okay? This is what active reading is all about, being critically engaged. And why is active reading helpful? Well, I'd say two, two key things. It helps students understand text more deeply because they're more critical of things. They kind of get below the surface level. And two, it helps them become more efficient readers because they can identify like purpose and meaning in the text faster and easier, okay? So they don't have to spend as much time going through the text. They can find the, the meaning uh, and the, like, the essence of what the author is trying to say uh, quick, quicker and more efficiently. So this is why we want students to develop their academic reading skills so they can become better active readers. And these are the 14 reading skills in this series, okay? These are the ones that we include in, in our series. I know there, that's a lot there, okay? It's a lot for you to, to maybe take in all at once. But the point I want to make is just that these are the, the reading skills that this program uh, uses, okay, to, to test students, okay? So it gives them opportunities to practice these reading skills so that they can become better active readers. And if you're a better ac active reader, you can be a better a academic reader, okay? You can find information better and a lot quicker. So yeah, scanning for information. So for example, yeah, identifying purpose, um, it helps you understand the meaning uh, in the text, uh, what the author is actually trying to say. Uh, comparing and contrasting. So I can't see that actually. Um, so these are just some of the reasons why we wanna practice these reading skills. Okay, so if students can identify ideas for and against, they can recognize arguments uh, in the text. Okay, so just things like that. Okay, so that's enough of a preview. Um, 
or enough of an overview of the program. Now let's get into the, the guided lesson and, and talk more about how to actually teach this series and how to teach secondary reading. So we're gonna use Reading World One, Unit Eight. Okay, so this book in this nine book program. So we're gonna start out with pre-reading. Remember we have three sections in each lesson. We have pre-reading, we have during reading, and we have after reading. So pre-reading, we are going to start with, I think it's always a great idea. It's one thing that I didn't use enough, I think, or don't use enough as a teacher, uh, is videos. I mean, who doesn't like watching a video? They, they're fun to watch and they're just a great way to get students engaged, especially uh, for a topic like this, right? Flying cars. So I, I don't think we have time uh, to actually watch the video. Uh, it's a little bit long, but I just wanted to just suggest it to you. Try to find videos. It's quite easy to find a decent video uh, on any topic, really. So why not use that um, uh, as a way to sort of get students engaged um, and just thinking about the, the content. And I actually, yeah, I found a video here that has a lot of the flying cars that you can see there on the, on the page from the book. So it connects really well. Okay. So yeah, just, tr just try, to, try to use videos whenever you can. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Th that's a great point too. Yes. And we do provide video links as su supplementary material. Okay. And I will uh, get to that uh, near the end when we talk about additional resources. Okay. Um, so discussion, we have some discussion questions here. Let's Tr let's try some out. So I'd like to ask you, which flying car model do you like the most or the least? And write your comments maybe in the in the chat room. So though you see the the six flying car models there, they're all a little bit different, a little bit similar. Oh, okay, the Terrafusia. Why why do you like the Terrafusia the most? Okay, you like the, the color? Personally, I like the Aero Mobile the best. I think it looks the most futuristic. Um, although the Airbus drone also looks very cool because the rotor, the helicopter part of it can detach from the car, which is I think really cool. Yes, okay, the Aeromobile mobile looks like a jet, right? It looks like a real airplane, but then it also looks like a car too at the same time. Yeah, the Audi pop-up, it looks like a drone, like a drone that you could actu actually fly, right? Instead of just remote control. Mm. Yes, uh, Reading Town has, it, it is a lower level. The passages have fewer words in them, okay? So the word counts are, any, I think, anywhere from 220 to 300 words in Reading Town, okay? So um, anyways, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but those are some discussion questions that we could ask about the pictures. So all of the um, discussion questions are usually related to the images and the pictures that are um, displayed on the page. And this is just an ext extension uh, idea for you. So perhaps you could answer the questions from different perspectives. This is one of my favorite things to do with, like, with discussion questions and to encourage discussion with, with students. So thinking about 
the same question, but from a different perspective. So for example, maybe in this case, we could think about each question from the perspective of a pilot. So if students pretend that they are pilots, hmm, they might think about the questions a little bit differently. It's just maybe a way for them to think about uh, the questions more deeply or yeah, just from a different perspective. Um, so in this case, as a pilot, hmm, maybe which flying car model do you like the least? pretending that you are a pilot. Hmm, if I was a pilot, I think I would like the, hmm, which one would I like? The, the Airbus drone. Okay, why the Airbus drone, Rhonda? I don't wanna cover up the, the images. You would not fly the PAL-V, okay? Yeah, it's completely different to an airplane. I agree, the, the PAL-V looks the most like just a normal car. And okay, maybe it looks dangerous. So as a pilot, maybe I, I'm not so interested in cars. I want something that looks more like an airplane. So I might prefer the, the Aeromobile. Yeah, it doesn't look like an airplane. Great answer, exactly. Okay, so that's, I just wanna introduce that uh, activity idea to you, okay? So thinking about the same question, but from a different perspective. So maybe another question, uh, another perspective could be a superhero. Hmm, if you're a superhero, what, what do you want to see in your flying car? What, what are you gonna like the most? What are you gonna need the most? Uh, maybe what are you gonna like the least, okay? So if you had a flying car, how would you use it if you were a superhero? Hmm, if I was a superhero, I'd want something that's really fast. So again, I probably wouldn't want the you would not even, okay, maybe you could fly. That's a good point. Maybe you're a superhero that can't fly, okay, uh, but good point. So, but if I'm a superhero, maybe I don't want a helicopter because it's too slow, right? So maybe I don't want the drone. I don't want the Cesare or the Volocopter. Again, probably I want the Aeromobile because it's the fastest, okay? So anyways, that's, that's just uh, a different way to do your discussion questions with your your students. And another, another extension activity idea is to use clines, which uh, you might be wondering, what are clines? They're basically like scales. You, I'm sure you'll be familiar with it once I show you the image. So you can turn the questions into statements. So maybe, hmm, the Volocopter is the best flying car and then have students maybe strongly disagree, strongly agree, you know, be neutral, disagree, agree, whatever. Um, because I think it, it makes it more interesting for students. And then once they make their decision, once they say, mm, I strongly disagree, then they have to maybe explain their, their choice, okay, their decision. Um, Klein's just means a, a scale from like one to five. So in a, like in a survey, usually you see a cl Klein's, okay? So usually it's one to five or maybe even one to 10. So it's just like a, a scale that where you um, express your opinion, okay? So that's just another idea. Okay, so key vocabulary. Again, we haven't started uh, actually reading the passage yet, but here um, there are 10 key vocabulary words bolded in each passage, okay? So you can see them here. I've obviously highlighted them with the red boxes. 
So those are the 10 key words, but before we read the passage, we want to do an exercise so that students become familiar with these key words. So we make a, a list of our key words and we have to match them to their correct definitions. Okay, so hmm, someone who created a company or organization. Can anyone guess what that is? Yes, nice, founder, founder, good. Okay, so just matching up the definitions with the keywords so that students can become uh, a little bit more familiar with these keywords before they read them in the passage in a certain context. And this is another extension activity idea for vocabulary for you. Um, so cubing, so when you, a cube, how many sides does a cube have? Six, yes, six sides, okay? So when you cube something, you sort of look at it from six different angles or six different sides. So it's a little bit simpler than it sounds maybe. So in this case, we can take each word and we can have students roll a dice. And of course, you can, you can get a, a dice online. I've listed one link uh, there, but there, there are several. And you can have them roll a dice. And then depending on what number they get, they have to do a certain, like they have to do that action uh, with the word. So they might, if they get a one, they have to define the word. So they have to maybe say a definition or write out a definition in their own words. Or they have to, if they get a two, they have to make a sentence with the word. If they get a three, they can act it out. Okay, that might be difficult in some settings, but it, it, it can be possible. So they just have to act out, maybe for founder, they could act out maybe inventing something, uh, you know, acting like someone who's trying to come up with a new idea. Uh, and then of course, a synonym or an antonym or actually drawing it out. That could be difficult too, but um, of course it, it might be possible depending on your situation. Yeah, sorry, yeah, it is, it is quite high level vocabulary. You could maybe change it and just say like, a similar word or like a word with a similar meaning or five could be a word with a different or like very different meaning or opposite meaning. Okay. You could, you could use that as well. Right. Cool. Great. Okay. So that's, that's cubing. Um, and it's always fun to play with the dice, right? Okay. Who doesn't like to, to, to roll the dice and, and see what number comes up. So that was our pre-reading section. We had uh, discussion, we were introduced to the key vocabulary, we looked at some interesting images of the flying cars. So during reading now, we're actually on our passage here, okay? So this is the passage for this lesson about flying cars. But how do we actually get students reading actively? I know this is, this is one of the most difficult things for me is how do you actually read with your students or how do you get them to, to read properly? Uh, well, here are some, some tips anyways, okay? So how to get students reading actively, that's the key. We don't want them to just read sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph. What we really, I think, want them to do, or what I suggest, okay, you take turns, one sentence per student. Okay, that, that's a good way to, to do it too. Um, yeah, taking turns, and then students have to, to pay attention, right? Because they have to know when it's going to be their, their turn. That, that's a good idea too. Thank you for sharing. Um, the sort of the method that I wanted to introduce to you or share with you is what I call the read stop blank approach. Okay. So you might be wondering, Hmm, what is that? 
So in order for students to really be actively reading, we want them to read. You stop, watch. Okay, yeah, thank you for sharing all those ideas in the chat. That's great. I, I want everyone to, to see all of those, okay? So the, the idea that I'll share with you here is just we want students to read, stop, and take an action, okay? We want an action, again, because we want them to be active. So what are some ways to do that? So read, stop, and ask, maybe. That's, that's one way, okay? This could be many things. So we got read, stop, action. There are many different actions we can take here to be, to be active readers. Read, stop, ask a question, okay? That's one way. So here we have, in our passage, we have, mark my words, we, we have a quote there, and then it mentions remark. Hmm, maybe students could write down or you could ask students, hmm, when did Henry Ford make this remark? And maybe they could find that information out, right? We, we want them to be thinking about all of this information that they're reading, okay, and asking questions. So read, you can have students stop there and maybe ask and just even if they don't know the answer, they're probably not gonna know the answer in this case, they can just maybe make some guesses. Hmm, so when did Henry Ford make this remark? Hmm, maybe he made it 100 years ago. Maybe he made it 50 years ago. You can have a, like a little mini discussion to get students thinking and like actively thinking about what they just read there in the, the first couple sentences. Okay, so read, stop, Ask a question. Another way, read, kind of, okay, yes, predictive reading, we're, we're gonna get to that, but that's great, Julian. Um, that, I, that, thank you for, for sharing that too. So read, stop, analyze. We can, we can find something in the text here, hmm. So it mentions the word aerobile in the passage. That's one of the old flying car models that was developed in the 1930s, okay? But maybe after this sentence, we can stop and we can ask students to analyze aerobile. Hmm, so why was it called the aerobile? Sure, they, I'm, I'm sure they don't know, but they can make guesses and they can sort of analyze, hmm, arrow, hmm, when you think of an arrow, what do you think of? I'm, I'm asking you now, what do you think of when you think of an arrow? Like Robin Hood, right? Like a bow and arrow, something flying through the air. Yes, fast, like a flying car, right? And, hmm, what do you think bile means? Oh, era, for, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Yeah, because it can fly in the air. And what about the bile part, B-I-L-E? Hmm, what does that make you think of? Anything? Cars, yes, mo a mobile, automobile, right? Because it can move. So it's like a flying moving car, right? Exactly. Okay. There you go. So we, you know, we analyzed a word in the text. Okay. Okay. So, so read, stop, analyze. Another thing, read, stop, identify. We want to identify certain things in the, the passage. It might be fact or opinion, or it might be Main, a main idea. So maybe after students have read a paragraph, you can stop and ask them to identify what the main idea of the paragraph is. So again, instead of just continually reading, we can read a chunk, in this case, a paragraph, stop, 
and then ask them to identify the main idea in that paragraph. And again, that just keeps students more engaged, uh, keeps their attention, and then they can just go back through the paragraph and try to identify the main idea, okay, as you go along. So, yeah, in, in this case, I, I think it would just be that the Volocopter uh, is the world's first flying taxi, right? So that paragraph is then going to talk about the Volocopter, which is the world's first flying taxi, okay? So just keeping students engaged. And of course, you're, as a teacher, you are going to have to read this passage beforehand so that you can pick out and identify these points in the, the passage, which I've done and am doing with you here. So one last example, um, as someone mentioned, predictive reading, okay? So we can read, we can stop, and then we can make a prediction. We can predict something. Maybe we can predict what's gonna happen later on in the passage or make a prediction like this. So the sentence is, the competition is now on with several car makers designing their own flying cars. We can make a prediction. What do you think the next flying car will look like? Okay, so again, just keeping students actively thinking about the material that they're reading as you go along, okay? Sort of just breaking things, things down a bit too, because I think we, we all know that we learn better when we learn in, in smaller chunks, right? Okay, so read, stop, that's, that's one approach. And another tip for you is to just give students reading tasks. So maybe before you ask them to read by themselves, uh, give them some tasks, okay? Just as simple as write down three facts that you read about in the passage, write down two interesting things, and maybe write down one question that you have uh, from, the, from the text, okay? So just give them some tasks before reading by themselves. Uh, ask them to write down uh, these things, and that will just keep them engaged and that will keep their focus because they'll be looking for those things, okay? So it's all about just uh, keeping them active and engaged. Which reading skills did, did we use, okay? I'm gonna, so just the, the point is here that we, um, we had students maybe identify uh, main ideas there that we did that. We use number three, making inferences. We had students sort of guessing about certain things. Why is it called the aerobile or why was it called the aerobile? Things like that, okay? Um, okay. Can't we use the pictures in addition to text? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, um, pictures are great too. I don't know if I fully understand. Okay, yes, yeah, the pictures give many hints to the content. Sure, that, that's, that's great, that will be helpful too. Okay, so move, moving along here. Um, so I just wanna point out the different reading skills that are covered in uh, this section during reading. So we have scanning for information, identifying main ideas, comparing and contrasting, understanding words and context. So the point here is just that the series has exercises that test all of these different reading skills, understanding words in context, making inferences, identifying purpose, 
recognizing restatement. So after students have read the passage and after you've read it together, um, then they are asked all of these, like asked to do all of these exercises which test their academic reading skills, okay? So uh, each lesson doesn't cover all of the 14 reading skills, but throughout the program, all of those 14 reading skills are practiced and tested. So yeah, this would be an example. So students would have to answer this question, go back to the, the, the passage to find out which sentence best restates um, the, the, the sentence in the, in the passage. So the competition is now on with several car makers designing their own flying cars. So students would have to look at those four choices in the question and figure out which sentence best restates uh, that line from the passage. And just as an extension, maybe you could have students try to restate that same sentence in their own words. So perhaps currently car makers are in a race with each other to make their own flying car. Okay. And Comparing and contrasting, that's another reading skill that students are, are able to practice in the exercises. You can see this chart here. This is directly from the, the book, one of the pages in the book. And just again, as an extension here, uh, you could compare and contrast in other ways. Uh, you could have Flying, you could compare flying cars and regular cars. So instead of comparing two different models of flying cars, you could have students compare regular cars and flying cars, okay? Sorry, I don't wanna, I, I gotta move along a little bit quicker here. I know, I think I've taken more time than I expected uh, on the previous stuff. Okay, good. So anyways, you can, you, you can have the, the slides too if you ever need it. You can, I'll give you my contact information at the end. I can send it to you. So yeah, fact files. You can see the two fact files at the bottom uh, of the, the passage there, passage pages. Good, wonderful. And one of the best ways to actually test comprehension I find reading comprehension is to have students make their own questions based on the text that they read. Okay, so you could have students read the fact files there, maybe by themselves, and then ask them to make their own question based on the material. Okay, so in this case, there's a fact file about that Airbus drone that we, we saw earlier, right? Well, maybe students could make their own questions like, how heavy do you think the drone is? How fast do you think it can fly? You know, if you're able to make a question about something, it usually means that you understand it, right? So this is a great way to test reading comprehension. So have students make their own questions about what they read, okay? So that's just a, a, a tip there. And you, you, I mean, you can do that with, with anything really, but I just use the fact files as an example, okay? Which reading skills did we use? So I'm not gonna go through it, but we, you know, just the point is that we're really trying to give students as many opportunities as possible to practice these 14 reading skills, okay? To help them become more active readers, okay? So, yes. And now act after reading, so vocabulary practice, there's more vocabulary re review. You can see there students will fill in blanks, uh, with uh, the, the target vocabulary, those 10 keywords from the passage. Synonyms and antonyms. So words with similar meanings and words with opposite meanings. Discussion, questions, 
more so more discussion questions there are lots of opportunities for discussion and writing practice okay as i've as i've mentioned before so in this case i would or i wouldn't want my own private flying car because and then students can give their own reasons for why they would or wouldn't want their own private flying car and a little another activity extension idea for you here that you can use is something called brain writing i think we're all familiar with brainstorming brain writing is similar but instead of it being oral based it's actually a written based activity okay so i think it works a lot better than brainstorming because as we all know in class students are usually a little bit shy to share their responses or their answers so or their ideas so but when they write them down usually they're more likely to 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 be comfortable sharing their ideas so how this works, maybe students can get into groups. I, I don't know if you're able to do that these days, but maybe some, at some point you'll be able to use this. Uh, students get into groups of, let's say four, and each, students has, each student has a chart like, like this, like, like you see here. And each student writes their name in the first sl slot there. And then they write three ideas related to the question that you're discussing. So in this case, I chose question three there in the discussion section. Imagine the design of your own flying car. Describe it in detail. So this might not be the best way to do it, but it's just a good way to just generate ideas and get students thinking. So a student, each student will write down an idea. So all glass, or write down three ideas, sorry. Maybe their flying car will be made of all glass. It will have four wings and maybe really big wheels. Once each student has written three ideas along the top, they pass their paper to the next person in their group. Then the next person in their group can see what the previous person wrote, and then they can sort of, they don't have to, but they can build upon the ideas that the previous person wrote, and they can get a sense of what other people are thinking. So maybe, hmm, instead of mine being all glass, I'm going to somehow make mine invisible, okay? Or I'm, my wings, instead of having four wings, I'm gonna have like V-shaped wings. Uh, or instead of big wheels, I'm gonna have three wheels. Just so we can kind of like feed off each other. So third person, maybe they want their flying car to be stealth so nobody can see it or hear it or find it. Uh, maybe lots of engines, etc. okay? So the point is students can build upon each other's ideas and they can see what other people are thinking. And I just think that brain writing tends to work a lot better uh, than, brain, uh, than brainstorming because students are more comfortable sharing their ideas in written form. Okay, um, and finally, yes, there is a review section. Got it, sorry, I, got, I, have to, I have to hurry a little bit here. Review section. So after the two lessons in each uh, in in each unit, there is a review section which covers both lessons. Um, students have to identify main ideas. There's a crossword puzzle there, and there's a vocabulary uh, review section. Okay, and I found this game. Oh, are we have. Uh, you know what? I don't think we're gonna have time to play, but this is what it looks like. It's, it's actually called Factile. And if anyone's familiar with the game Jeopardy, you can make your own Jeopardy board. Okay, so what I've done here, I think it's a, it's a great way to review vocabulary words, is I've written 
categories along the top. So like definition, synonym, antonym, use in a sentence, use in a question, make an association. And students will have to, sorry, I don't think I can, I can't access it right now, but it is factile. Okay, just so you know, that's the, the link there. And students will choose a, choose a value in a certain category. It will reveal a word and then they have to give an answer. So you can plug in all of the target keywords from, from the unit. And it's just a, a really fun way to, to practice all of the vocabulary, okay? And then depending on which category it is, students have to do that certain activity with the words, that, that, that certain action with, with the word, okay? Um, and then if they get it right, they get points. If they don't, uh, they don't get the points, okay? So you can play in teams, uh, it's a lot of fun. So that's Factile Jeopardy. Y yes, uh, I can. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Okay, yeah, this was the, the URL there, but uh, so you'll be able to see it if you have the, the slides. Okay, additional resources. Um, man, time just fly flies by. Uh, so there are eBooks. Um, there are MP3 files uh, for all of the passages, okay? So you can play the audio for each passage. And yeah, okay, there are tests, answer keys, PPT materials with, with video links and questions as I think Sue mentioned in the chat. So you can find the ebook on eSmart Campus, eSmart Class, and okay, of course there. Are, and if for all the like tests and answer keys, MP3 files, you can find those at the eFuture website. You can uh, you can find them under downloadable resources. And these are the. PPT materials with video links. So I talked about using preview videos for the, um, you know, for the pre-reading section. You can actually find YouTube links, like video links that we have picked out specifically for each passage. And we've uh, added a couple, like, you know, comprehension questions with them, okay? So you can, you can access those too. And these are just the tests and answer keys. Oh, sorry, I had to wrap up so quickly. Um, just the, the time just flies like a flying car. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I hope I'm glad everyone liked it. Thank you for sharing your comments and thank you for being here. You're welcome. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, please ask them now. And yeah, if you would like to contact me, you can contact me at kevin at eltkorea.com. You're welcome. Thank you everyone for being here. Good, great. Thank you so much. Okay, and yeah, you can go to the eFuture website, of course, to get some downloadable resources. All there. Oh, and last thing I have to mention <laughs> uh, is that uh, you can yeah, go to the eFuture website, eSmart Class. I mentioned those. You can follow us on Facebook if you're on Facebook. Uh, also, Instagram as well. Okay? You're a big Fan of eFuture books, great. I'm glad you like them. Stay safe, be well also. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, check out Sue's activity ideas. She's got great activity ideas, uh, okay? And last but not least, 
This is a list of all of our partners. So if you're looking for a certificate to show that you attended the webinar, you can contact these people, okay, depending on, on where you live. Yeah, we, we love to get feedback on them, okay? Because, yeah, we're trying to do our best, but we know we can, we can do better. So we'd love some critical feedback. We can, we can handle it. We can take it. Okay, have, have a good day or have a good night. Yeah, bye-bye.